In this video, we're tackling a few big problems with tower gardens that are very common and very easy to fix if you have the right tools and information. So I linked up a couple free guides in the description box below. One is a problem solving guide uh, for your tower garden that goes over five issues that I've had while using a tower garden and solves all five of them. In today's video, we're going to be covering three of those issues. So while you're at Hummel Growth Hydroponics downloading that free guide, uh, check out the other guides I have there. I have one on maintaining your hydroponic garden, which I think could be really useful to any of you tower aero gardeners. As as well. First a little backstory. So this Juice Plus Tower Garden actually belongs to my in-laws. Last year they let me borrow it for a season and I had a really successful growth until everything froze in it. Fast forward a year, here we are to visit. They're using the Tower Garden, but we walked in and they pretty much all but begged me to help them to optimize this thing, to get it to grow better. She wants to be able to come over here and pick a salad off and, and really use this thing. And as of right now, they're running into a few issues. So. I began to examine the tower garden. Uh, I walked around slowly and the first thing I noticed was the excessive algae growth on almost all the rock wool. So plants like this basil up at the top never stood a chance. See, algae is very oxygen and nutrient hungry. Uh, it basically consumes all that it's given, like a gluttonous pig. So when you develop algae like this on top of your rock wool, it rids the plant of its much needed nutrients and its oxygen. Uh, if left alone, this would eventually grow and envelop the seedling and just kill the plant. Now, the one thing to know about algae is algae grows in or on water. So in order for algae to thrive, it requires a very moist environment. The second thing to know is that it requires light for it to photosynthesize, meaning that algae can't grow in a dark place. So if we want algae to thrive, we would give it a consistently wet place uh, that has a lot of light on it. Pretty much exactly what we're giving it in a tower garden with grow lights. To prevent algae, it's actually quite simple. Just keep the light from hitting the rock wall. To do this, you can use really whatever you want that isn't gonna absorb any of the water. Like you can use uh, pebbles, um, vermiculite is what I used here. Anything that's gonna block the light from hitting the top of the rock wall and isn't gonna become super wet itself. Uh, that is a really simple solution to making sure that the top of your rock wool doesn't get a ton of algae on it. Just make sure the top of your rock wool doesn't get any light or soaking wet. It will get wet because it's a sponge essentially. Just make sure it's not available to light. So as I moved around the tower more, I saw a unique phenomenon happening with the arugula. Like while all the other plants were busy in their early growth stages, the arugula was shooting flowers straight up towards the lights. I mean, it had gone straight into flower staging, and this is typically called bolting in, in the gardening world, and it happens when you plant too late in the season and it gets too hot. Basically, the plant thinks, oh no, I don't have enough time to go through the entire growth process. I better just save my species and revert to, um, oh my gosh, reproduction, sorry. Focus on reproduction and shoots flowers straight up to the pollinators. And then it all came to me as I walked around and looked at this sad, sad lettuce plant. This is supposed to look like this, not like this. This became more of a lettuce vine than a lettuce plant. I mean, it would take like five feet to make a salad out of something like this. This is absolutely textbook stem elongation. And what causes stem elongation is an overabundance of red light. Now, quick crash course on red light waves. Red light promotes stem elongation, as I just said. It also is the most used wavelength for photosynthesis. That means when your plant needs a lot of the light, like when it's flowering or fruiting, you should use as much red light as you possibly can. That's when your plant's gonna absorb it the best and utilize the photons. That's when uh, chlorophyll is at its absolutely most active and photosynthesis is really happening. So when manufacturers make these full spectrum grow lights, they're making the the vast majority of the photon density is going to be aimed towards uh, red wavelength delivery for flowering and fruiting stages. They do contain blue lights, of course. They have some of the blue light wave in them, but it's not enough to balance out the amount of red. So if your light's not on a dimmer and you're using a full spectrum grow light and it's just blasting 100% of the entire wavelength at this plant, even in its early growth stages, all that red light is gonna tell your plant it's time to kick in photosynthesis and start flowering and fruiting because that's what we use red light for in the indoor grow world is when you're ready for your plant to start fruiting, you introduce a bunch of red light, it starts budding, it starts fruiting, and that's when you really can cater to its own individual growth. But if you introduce all that red light from the start, then it's gonna kick right into bolting, right into pre-flowering, right into stem elongation mode, and it's never gonna get the chance to uh, 
to really leaf out and grow bushy and grow, grow the way it's supposed to. Check out this video, or in fact, this entire video series if you wanna get a lot more into LED lighting. I'm currently doing a deep dive into LED lighting in a series I'm calling Synthesizing Sunlight. This is an absolutely perfect example of what happens when you just use an LED grow light that's full spectrum and just leave it on. So I would say the solution for this is to just go pick up a simple dimmer switch. You can get an AC dimmer at like Home Depot or something, Walmart for five bucks. Just plug the lights into that dimmer switch and then you can control, you'll have a variable wattage control so you can control how much power goes to the lights. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to do is introduce as much blue light as you can in those early growth stages. You can do this just by opening a window, I mean, introducing just natural daylight. It, cont it contains a lot of blue light wavelengths. Blue light halts stem elongation and promotes big leafy growth. So blue light keeps your plant compact. It, it promotes root growth, it promotes leaf growth, but it keeps the stems from getting too long. So if this becomes a problem for you, what you can do is pull your grow lights off completely and just bathe your tower garden in blue wavelengths, which uh, that video, like I mentioned before, is all about exactly how to do that. I'm not gonna get too into it here. All right, so we're gonna be visiting for a few weeks and I plan on documenting everything I do to this tower garden and doing a follow-up video, so make sure you're subscribed for that. Also, don't forget to check out humblegrowthhydroponics.com for all the free guides. Um, there's a great forum over there with people like you who are looking for for help and answering all the questions. Uh, so I look forward to meeting you guys over there. Let's grow together.